Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jen and this is Therapy. Today I want to talk to you about how abuse starts and how a lot of times we don't even know it's happening whenever it's very obvious looking back. Hey guys, I just want to jump in and say a few things really quick that are important to this video. Number one, um, our channel is normally a service dog channel. So if you're finding this because of the abuse video, that is why I have a service dog is because of all of the abuse. It actually gave me PTSD. So that's why I have a service dog. So it, it all ties in together, but I feel like this could be a video that people find randomly and are like, you know, her content isn't consistent. So that's why. Um, but I have other PTSD videos and I'll link those for you guys if you're interested. Um, the other thing, this is going to be a kind of a strange editing video because um, I don't have a problem talking about what happened. As I am editing this video back, I'm realizing that I have a problem listening to me talk about the abuse. Although it's kind of strange because I can, I can talk about it and I'm fine talking about it, but editing it back and hearing me talk about it, it makes it I don't know. It, it makes me feel the feels basically. And I'm not going to put myself through that. So the only thing I'm doing editing this is I'm going through and taking out any place where there's like a, where I can tell I'm being quiet basically. So it's not going to be edited the best. So it might get repetitive a few times. Um, but the story is super important. I feel like it's really important to get it out there and talk about it because I think so many women and probably men too go through this and it's just not talked about. So enjoy. I'm talking about domestic violence and abuse within a relationship. Of course, this could be any type of abuse that you are going through and looking back on it is different than how you perceived it at the time. And I think a lot of this has to do with being gaslit by your abuser. Because whenever you do mention things like, hey, wow, you know, I feel like that wasn't right or you were really mean just then, you know, bringing up things where you felt like you were treated badly, they will tell you you are too sensitive or you're crazy or, you know, things to make you feel like you are incorrect. So in my experience, I have been told for a long time that I am extremely sensitive and I do know that I am sensitive. I'm a very sensitive person. I know that. And I've been told that for the majority of my life. Also keep in mind the person who was abusing me, I have been in a relationship with since I was 14. So not, not continuous that whole time, but basically it set the tone at an early age that I was sensitive and they were just being normal. And that was kind of built into my brain. Like, okay, I am sensitive. You're right. You know, I am being sensitive. So a lot of times, the majority of the time, actually, I wouldn't tell like things that had happened because I had essentially been brainwashed. And I don't think that was the intention at the time, by the way, but I had essentially been brainwashed to think, well, you're just too sensitive. And this is like normal and normal people joke like this. And normal people are mean to each other. And and whatever um and i do think there are relationships where you know it's a lot of like back and forth where you kind of like pick each other apart in a funny way and i think there are people who do that with each other and they find it funny and if you have two people who are doing that i guess it's different but i'm not that way like i don't find humor in calling out your shortcomings like that's not funny to me but i know a lot of people do joke that way so you see how I'm justifying it at this point. And I would do this within my relationship. Um, and it got to where it wasn't just picking little things and being mean. It got to where it was body shaming. It got to where it was threats of like physical things or throwing things or whatever. And it snowballed. And the reason I'm talking about this in this way is because I feel like a lot of times people will be in an abusive relationship and it starts out where it is just like, well, they said this and it kind of hurt my feelings, but they said they were joking and they said I was sensitive and I am sensitive and they said they were joking. So I believe them because they love me and they wouldn't hurt me. And then it progressively gets to the point where somebody's pulling weapons on somebody else or hurting them. And I think the place between where that starts and where it goes is so blurred and it happens like it is a snowball. That's the only way I can describe it is 
what happened to me in my situation was a snowball and it would start out with like little and then a little extra would be added and a little extra and a little extra and you're conditioned the whole time along the way to feel like you know it's just you you're being too sensitive they're just messing with you or you know whatever it is to where it eventually gets worse and worse but you've been conditioned along the way to just accept it and then whenever you open your eyes one day it's been a nightmare and you feel like you know you're wrong for thinking that it was a nightmare and also because of my experience i didn't tell anybody a lot of the stuff that would happen most of the things that happened i didn't tell because i really did just think it was me and I wasn't in therapy at the time and I didn't really have anyone to talk to or the people that I did have to talk to, I would play it down so much because I was embarrassed that my husband would do these things to me. So a lot of times I would just be like, you know, maybe, maybe say one thing and be like, do you feel like this is kind of weird? Or do you feel like this is abusive or, or whatever? Or I don't even think I would ask if it was abusive. Do you feel like this is weird? Do you feel like he's mean? would be probably the words I would use at the time. And depending on who I asked, it might be like, yeah, well, you know, some people just are that way. Um, or the other thing I heard a lot was, you hurt the ones you love the most. And that is something that I'm sure most people have heard. Um, I would also have people justify like, well, he has a really hard time at work. Um, he's overworked and underpaid, you know, things, things to that nature to, justify why somebody would be in a bad mood um, or be rude or lash out or whatever. And I did agree that these things were all true. You typically are meaner to the people you love whenever you're going through something because you know they love you and they know you'll put up or they'll put up with your crap. Um, and also if you're stressed out, you're gonna lash out and be hateful. But the problem is I wasn't telling every single thing that happened and I wasn't telling people who actually knew, and I don't mean that mean, I'm not trying to downplay any anyone that I know, but if you've never dealt with abuse, then you don't recognize the signs of abuse. And whenever someone's only telling you a very small fraction of a piece of the story, it doesn't seem as bad as it is. You know, just within the last few years, we have gotten, and I guess probably been 10 years or more, where you can go online, you can look and you can like, find these groups and if it's a group about I think I'm being abused and you're reading people's stories and it's like oh my gosh everybody's story matches mine and this turned to this I better get out now um we didn't have that stuff a long time ago first off not even too long ago we didn't have that stuff but the other thing is in order to get into a place like that where you're seeing that you have to understand that you are being abused <laughs> so you have to go look for it it is not just talked about and I think that's a problem because we don't just talk about like how it starts and hey, this is how it goes and this is how it can get bad real quick. Um, and in my case, it didn't get bad really quick. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh wow, one day he was totally nice and then he switched and he wasn't because that wasn't the case. We had, even during the worst part of the abuse, we still have really, really great days and we'd have really great parts of days. So. It isn't just like somebody switches and they're like really nice and then they turn and they're mean and that's it forever. Like I can think of a lot of times where we would have had a wonderful day. Like our day would be great. We would have played games and drank and had, you know, whatever, gone out to eat, gone and did something fun, went to a show, whatever. We'd go do fun things and then all of a sudden it would just switch and it wouldn't be good anymore. And it might be something as simple as, I can think of one example, we had watched a movie and we were having a good time. Like, I think we had played some yard games like um, cornhole, I think it's not called cornhole everywhere, but where you toss the beanbag in the, the hole. We played ladder ball. Like we had, this was a, a summer day and we had done a lot of stuff outside. We had a lot of fun. We came in, we watched a movie and then we were gonna grill out and I cut up vegetables not the way that he thought I should cut vegetables to go on a skewer. And he took the skewer and tried to stab me with it. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was a great day. And like, your brain really has a hard time processing that. You know, like, okay, we've literally just had like the best time all day long. 
And then now here we are and I'm about to get stabbed, but it's not, I didn't do anything, but then they blame you and they make you feel dumb. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, oh, you know, whatever, you're fine. And they didn't actually stab me, so, you know, okay. Um, but then, like, the next day or later on that day, it's just like nothing happened. And then it's back to, you know, nice things being said to you or sweet notes or whatever. And you're just like, okay. But that was something that happened later, much later. That wasn't one of the first things. But I'm just saying that's an example of how it is, like, super, super great and everything is good. And then it's not okay anymore. And then it goes back to being okay. And in that situation, I believe I was locked out of the house for that as well, which in that case, you don't have anything with you. You don't have like your phone or anything. You just get locked out. So you couldn't call anybody. So I'm not gonna get into particulars on this because it doesn't, it's neither here nor there at this point. But the whole point is you can have a really good day with somebody and then them go off the deep end and flip out on you and then them turn right back around and be nice. Um, and then be nice for a couple days. And so it messes with your head because you're like, wow, you know, did I really do something to deserve that? You know, I did mess those potatoes up. At the time it was like, okay, you know, I, I did, I cut them dumb to go on a skewer, you know, you're right, I really did. So I'm blaming myself. And it's like, well, I mean, I guess if I wasn't being a dumb bitch, then I wouldn't have gotten, you know, just about stabbed. So that's what I'm saying, but you, you are being gaslit and then you gaslight yourself because you see their side and you're like, okay, well, I mean, I see, I see what you're saying here. Um, but that's just one example of something that's messed up that's happened and how you can gaslight yourself basically, which whenever I say it now, it sounds really, really dumb, but you have to think about it from a standpoint of being inside of a relationship with somebody like that who has made it seem like you can't trust yourself and that everything you do is wrong and that you are too sensitive and you know all these things basically what i'm saying is if you feel like you might be being abused and you feel like somebody's treating you weird um definitely do research so i will say a few things to look at are something called trauma bonding that's really important that's where you're basically bonded through trauma to somebody which is definitely what happens in i would say most abusive relationships but for sure in mine um, and the other thing is gaslighting which i think gaslighting is something the majority of the public is familiar with at this point particularly women i think we're you know, hearing that a lot more and more in the past few years, but trauma bonding and gaslighting, because those are two really big, important things that if you are being abused, you're probably going to relate to and be like, oh, wow, I need to find out more. The other thing I would say, if you feel like you are being abused, join one of the domestic violence survivors groups um, or domestic violence support groups, like on Facebook or something or I'm sure they're probably on Reddit and other places too, but join one of those. Even if you don't say a word, just go read. Because the reason this matters is because if you are being abused, you're gonna identify with so much and you are gonna see your story played out over and over and over and over. I just think it's something we don't talk about a lot. And the other thing I think that is not talked about is, like I said, the happiness part where you are happy and then there, you know, maybe one bad thing will happen. and that person turn on you like a switch and that can go on for you know you might have eight hours of really great and then four hours of really bad and then it goes back to great the rest of the day and then you might have a good day the next day before you can get to your phone or before you can get to a person or before you can get away from them to you know do whatever um to let somebody know but i would say the majority of people wouldn't have known and definitely goes for people at my ex-husband's work because we would go to work functions and you know it was like everything was great because we were in front of people and he wasn't going to be mean to me there of course you know like things were going great and he was being nice because we were in front of people at his work so he was going to be good to me and i think people who saw us would definitely be like you know no he's not mean to her he's good to her um, and even he used to bowl. And so we would go to the bowling alley 
he was on a bowling league and we would go and like people would see us together and it would be like, you know, no, he's a good guy. He's good to her. You know, I, I see him be good to her and they would, they would see that because he was, but then, you know, he wouldn't be good to me. So I think that's another way that people do perceive abusers a lot of times as being really good people and they wouldn't do these things because they don't do them in front of people. Point of all this, if you think that there is something wrong and you feel like you're being mistreated, you probably are. Even if you feel like you're being mistreated and somebody's saying you're just too sensitive, but you feel like it's wrong, that can still be abuse. So you don't have to have somebody else justify it for you. If you feel like it's wrong and you don't feel good about it and you feel like somebody is purposefully hurting you and being mean to you or purposefully saying something, even if they know you're sensitive and like, why would they say it anyway is how I look at it, that's abuse. And like I said, if you feel like you're like, wow, I kind of feel like this is abuse and this is, I don't know, join some groups and just read comments because I think that's really eye-opening and that's what did it for me, which I wish I'd done that, you know, way before I did. Um, but I think just seeing other people's stories, you know, it helps you to, to realize. So also in my experience, my husband was not abusive all the time. Um, it started out that he would be abusive maybe a couple days a month, maybe. Um, and then it progressed by the end, by the time that everything really ended, he was abusive probably four or five days a week out of, you know, every single week. And it got progressively worse too, because at first it would just be, you know, maybe some unkind things said, and it got to the point where, you know, weapons were pulled on me. Um, I was constantly locked out of the house. I would constantly, just a lot of things. I'll make a, a video going into detail one day, maybe. If you guys wanna see it, I can go through and list a lot of the things that happen. At this point, I just wanna raise awareness and let people know what abuse is. So even though it's not exactly comfortable to talk about everything, I still think it matters so much because I think there's so many people who just feel like, oh wow, it's like normal. Like, I mean, I used to get locked out of the house multiple days a week, just randomly, because I did something dumb, where isn't, I wasn't doing anything dumb, really, or maybe I might do something that would be like, you know, maybe I didn't think it through all the way, but it wasn't like ever to be mean. So I hope this has helped you to maybe look at things from a different perspective, possibly. So if you feel like you're being abused, you probably are, but also if you feel like you know somebody who might be in an abusive situation, send them this, or at least like tell them what you've heard. Another really important thing to talk about here is if you know someone and they are being abused and you know that, do not give them like an ultimatum and say, if you don't leave them, then don't talk to me again or I don't want to hear you complain about this anymore unless you're going to do something. I had people tell me that and it just made me stop telling them what was happening, which isolated me even more. I really just need to talk. I didn't have a way to leave and I didn't have a way to take action and do anything about it at the time. but by somebody telling me if you don't take action and do something i don't want to hear about it anymore it really took away an outlet for me um and it made me feel like i couldn't talk to that person anymore and it also made me feel like that i wasn't validated in my feelings and that I, my feelings didn't matter and basically it was basically like i didn't matter and because of my inability to take action like i wasn't valid as a person to have feelings. So don't do that to somebody. Be a listening ear. If you know someone who's going through abuse, validate them, tell them, yeah, that's messed up, you know? And the other thing is if for some reason they try to leave and they want to get back with the person, still support them anyway, because a lot of times it takes people, I think it takes people like seven times to leave an abuser usually. Like it's a lot of back and forth usually. So just be supportive and try to just hear them out and validate them in their experience. Um, offer resources if they ask for resources. You can say things like, hey, I heard about this thing called trauma bonding. You might be interested in reading about it or hearing about it and send them a link maybe. Um, but it is very hard to break that bond. For me anyway, 
I felt like I wanted to see the best of my husband and I just could not wrap my head around how this was actually him now and he was really gonna be this way. Because I'd known him for so long. It's like, he wasn't always this way, some things happened. And I think a lot of people are that way where they just feel like they can't accept it almost. So if you have questions or if you're interested in hearing me talk about this more, definitely let me know, leave a comment and let me know. Um, I am happy to open up and tell pretty much anything that I have experience with. It's really important to talk about how things can be perceived to be one way, even in your own mind, and then you know a few hours later change and then go back. And it's not because you're crazy, it's because of you truly want to see the best in somebody and you can't believe that they would do this to you. A really important thing to know is that that is why I have PTSD. So it can cause you to actually have health problems if you're being abused like this and it can traumatize you forever so i didn't know that at the time i found that out much much later and now unfortunately it's gonna stick with me forever in a in a way that i totally would have never expected so just be aware that that can happen and also if you're a person who's watching this and you don't have the same experience, um, be aware that that is a way people can get PTSD. And it's a totally valid reason because you're basically at war all the time in your own home. So I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, leave a comment if you have questions or if you want me to touch on any additional subjects with this, topics, whatever, I'm happy to do what I can. Um, I'm gonna link a subscribe button up here. By the way, we're usually a service dog channel. If you found this out, I have a service dog for my PTSD. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit subscribe. Um, I will link a mental health playlist over here and a video just for you here, and we will see you soon. Bye guys.